Here in South Africa, it can also get very hot, but there's no danger of flooding. So termites can take refuge from the heat below ground, where it's cool and relatively stable. But two million insects living below ground create a different kind of problem. The air around them gets stale. So termites need to have a way of linking the underground air with the fresh air above, a ventilation system. And they do that with this. And to see how it works, you've got to look inside. Using the latest scanning techniques, we can create a picture of the mound's interior. An intricate network of passages lead to a central chimney. Hot, stale air from the insect population below rises up through the chimney. But the top of the mound is sealed. So how does this stale air escape? The mound may look as though it has strong defensive walls like a fortress, but in fact these walls are porous and their primary purpose is to harness the wind. Fresh air blowing against the side of the mound is forced through the tiny holes in these walls. From there, it travels through the smaller tunnels until it reaches the central chimney. Here, the cooler, fresh air mixes with the hot, stale air rising from the insect community below. Meanwhile, some air is blown around the side of the mound. This creates a suction that pulls the stale air out of the chimney and out through the outer walls. So an internal air current is created and the whole mound ventilated. The mound's inhabitants spend most of their time close to or below ground level. Beneath their living quarters, there are garden chambers where the termites cultivate a fungus that rots the wood and vegetation they collect and make it digestible. Farther down still, the queen lies in her own chamber. Her huge body is a gigantic egg-producing factory. She's so swollen that she can't look after herself. The workers must constantly clean her and feed her with food from their own crops. Her partner, with whom she founded the colony maybe 20 years ago, is still with her and mates with her throughout her life. She lays eggs at an extraordinary rate, as many as 30,000 a day. As she produces them, so workers remove them from the royal chamber and take them to nurseries. There they'll be fed on compost from the fungus gardens until they turn into adults. The superorganism that lives in this great castle crops the surrounding vegetation just about as severely as an antelope. The density of individual termites around here is extraordinary, over 100,000 per square metre. And just as there are lions and leopard that hunt antelope, so in the undergrowth there are insect hunters which prey on the tiny herbivores, the ants, the termites' ancient enemy. Matabele ants, specialist termite hunters. A scout has laid down a clear chemical trail and this battalion of workers have picked it up and are following it. There may be only a few hundred of them, but they're going to severely test the defenses of a termite colony. The mound has formidable guards, soldier termites. The ants have a special technique for dealing with these soldiers. They grab the termite's jaw and then sting it in the only vulnerable place on its head, in its mouth.
The ants' front line breaks into the colony. Reinforcements for the termite soldiers arrive quickly. Already there are casualties on both sides. But the invaders overwhelm the defenders. It's not to the ants' advantage to kill an entire termite colony, any more than it would be sensible for farmers to exterminate their cattle. Better to let most survive so that they can be regularly raided. So, although there are millions of termites in the colony, the Matabele ants rarely go deep into the nest to press home their victory. The raid lasts less than 15 minutes. Nonetheless, the spoils are impressive. Termite bodies are now being piled in dumps outside the nest. Many of the casualties are still alive, but paralyzed by the ant's stings. Now the raiders have the considerable task of carrying their victims back to their nest.